Well, let's switch gears a little bit to the other main topic that we want to get into. Uh, all right, so we've, we've you know, seen young, young Anakin, seen Luke and Leia get born. We've seen uh, them in their later teenage years and, mm -hmm. and growing up. And in the, in the extended universe, I don't know if you guys read a lot of the books, but we've seen them uh, grow up, have families. Uh, you know, Luke and Leia and Han, they all have kids now. Um, and, uh, you know, they're training their kids up in the ways of the Force, among them going to the dark side and all that. That's the year over there. So we, we kind of know from their later teenage years to, to their uh, adult years, even later adult years, have what their lives were like. But we haven't really seen much about what it might have been like for them as kids. Mm -hmm. so what, what do you think? Put yourself in the lives of, let's, let's start with Leia. Put your, put your mind in the life of Leia living on Alderaan. She's a princess. She's part of the ruling house of Alderaan. Uh, what do you think her life would have been like? I think she's headstrong. <laughs> she's probably, I mean, you can tell as a teenager she was, you know. So I think she'd be probably a little unruly, but she she knows what's right to do and seems like she does it, but she probably has a little attitude about her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah, and she didn't know anything about the Force, so I wonder if she did things on accident sometimes, you know, like some of the younglings, I think, before they were chosen with the Old Republic or whatever, they showed some of their Force ability without knowing it. I wonder if she did that. And you know, that's that's a really good point because since we don't know right off that Leia is Luke's sister, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know that we don't know that she's Skywalker. We don't know if she has any connection to the Force, and therefore they kind of play her in the movies as not having that connection. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only later that we find out, and, and then she reveals that yes, she has some connectivity to the Force. Even in the, in the extended universe, she never develops her Force abilities to the yeah. to the uh, levels that that Luke does. But um, so yeah, I think that's an interesting thought. Uh, was she successful in? doing what she did because of that unknown force connection. Was she aware of it at all? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, she was, what were they, about 18 at the yeah. start of A New Hope? Uh, so she's pretty young, and yet in a position to where she was heading up a mission to steal the Death Star plans, get them to Obi-Wan, uh, uh, or get Obi-Wan and get them all to, uh, to Alderaan. That's that's a pretty impressive mission for an 18 year 18 year old mm -hmm. to be sent yeah. on. So it, it tends to make me think that that had to have something. Yeah, that she had quality about her that that made people think not only could she do it, but she would do it. You know, she'd be able to pull through. Yeah. Um, and uh, being that that she was raised by Bail Organa, who was pretty much right there at the beginning of the resistance. Right. I mean, he was he was. Uh, resisting the Empire before the Empire was even in place, really. Yeah. Uh, of course, he's going to, you know, bring her up with that fire against him. He's going to, you know, teach her about the evils that the Empire has done and are continuing to do, and um, get her in that mindset of, okay, you know, we got to bring these guys down. We got to do something to stop them before mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, before they kill more people. And, you know, continue the tyranny, um, and thus the mission to to get the Death Star plans. Uh, so, um, just the, you, there had to be a quality to her. Yeah, something. Um, so, do you, do you imagine her going off on missions like this from the time of a child, and maybe Bill was doing yeah this whole time, uh, either. Um, do you imagine him, you know, going off on these dangerous missions to fight the Empire and bring her along and kind of take Darwin? I don't over know. <laughs> and bring down the Empire. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably as a teenager. I mean, if he's, well, I mean, did he really allow her to do that or did she do that on her own? That's a good question. <laughs> so, 
I don't know, she could have just gone off and done that because we don't see we don't see him at all in the old trilogy, right, Bale? No. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, old trilogy. Um yeah, he was I guess still on Ultron, I'm sure. Um but yeah, I think she probably, as a teenager, probably got into her own stuff, too, with the mindset she had at 18. She had to have been getting into stuff a little earlier, you know, trying to help out where she could and all that. Well, we, we know she has a lot of experience with actual diplomacy. I mean, obviously, the, the mission for the Death Star plans, the, the whole um, diplomatic mission was just a cover, but, um, but she, she was... She was actually there. a diplomat right. um, in, in the public eye and just rebel behind the scenes. Uh, so, you know, I tend to think that, that she was probably sent out uh, on actual diplomatic missions mm -hmm. um, and that she uh, uh, has some real world experience with that. Uh, well, and that was the old Republic Jedi's kind of job, anyways, at mm -hmm. the point of the new trilogy, too. So, they, that would make sense. That would be one of the things she's good at, too, I guess. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit uh, as we talk about Luke, too. But uh, but he says something when he finds out that Leia is his sister. He says, uh, somehow I've always known. So I tend to think that maybe somewhere in the back of Leia's mind, elusive, it's not, not something that she's really conscious of uh, she's got this nagging feeling that you know that there's some connection out there uh, that uh, you know when, when Luke tells her you're my sister it's no surprise to her yeah. um, so I, I tend to think that maybe maybe there's something back there as she's growing up you know that there's I don't know, I, I think twins in real life kind of have that connection sometimes, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, they can be separated or never know the other one exists, but they always kind of have this feeling that there's a connection out there, some kind of, you know, odd little uh, uh, mental or spiritual thing going on. Um, so that'd probably be more pronounced with abilities and force, so mm -hmm. even though you don't yeah. know who it is or, you know, the specifics of it. Yeah, that makes sense. They have to have some kind of connection yeah. through twins with force. Right. And, it, and it's fun because... Uh, Luke's story would be so much different. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so, you know, here we got this, this kid growing up. He's with his actual family, for one thing. Um, even though, I mean, it's obviously family by, uh, by marriage, not by blood, but it's still, you know, still family. Growing up on a desert planet in the middle of nowhere, um, far from the, from the, the uh, castles and, and uh, uh, the beauty of, of Alderaan, um, growing up in the desert on a moisture farm. Yeah. Uh, he liked the racing through the canyons, though. Yeah. So, got that going for him. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, would he would have would he have become the pilot that he did if he hadn't had that childhood experience? Because right. um, you know, we're never seen Leia doing any piloting. Or, I mean, you know, we know she can handle a blaster as a, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, as a <laughs> Very much rebel so. leader. Mm -hmm. um, and if push came to shove, I, I tend to think that she'd be able to get behind the uh, like a wheel or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> the stick, <laughs> and, you know, and actually yes. But you know, but that that's not really her thing. But Luke, on the other hand, he's not so good maybe with the diplomacy or, or whatnot. Except for the lightsaber, diplomacy with the lightsaber. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he he can, he can get in the cockpit of, mm -hmm. you name it, and, uh, and cause all kinds of damage. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, well, yeah, would, would he have, would, would that have been the case if he didn't grow up in, in a place like Tatooine where he could, where he could oh. own those abilities? He seemed kind of like Anakin in that way, just, I mean, because Anakin, okay, yeah, he did the pottery scene, and he's the only human that could really do it, but... They were on Naboo, and he just kind of went up and got on the Starfighter. Yeah. And helped him <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so I think no matter where he was, he probably would have found his way into a cockpit. You're probably right. I don't know. Maybe not. But seems more likely probably would have 
may have been a misled. <laughs> Well, you know, and as they're getting ready for the attack on the first Death Star, the book talks about uh, bullseye womp rats, which are small, uh, obviously. And uh, so you got these people who are who are thinking that hitting the exhaust port's impossible. And Luke just kind of shrugs it off. Oh, you know, it's yeah. bullseye womp rats back home. Oh, well, that's, that's not so hard, is it, right? <laughs> um, so it makes me think that... Um, that uh, Maybe he had skills that kind of other people didn't have. Maybe he didn't even realize it necessarily. Maybe he didn't realize that nobody could hit those Wombrats like he could. Yeah, I don't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> but to him, he does. Man, no big deal. Just hopping it. Hopping your ship. Uh, what was it, T-16 or T-14? T-16. Hopping. Yeah, it's hopping. Skyhopper. Yeah. Sky <laughs> go, go bomb those guys. You know, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Just blow it up. <laughs> um, what color lightsaber, you know, if, you know, Sith colors were not just red and orange, would you still have a red lightsaber or would you have a different color? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, I, I like the red because it is distinctive. Um, it lets, lets people know that when they see you, you know, you know that you're looking at a Sith. So That's true. You know, that's, that's one reason I like the red for the lightsaber. Uh, but uh, uh, I do like the look of the green lightsabers. So combine them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe so. I, <laughs> a Christmas lightsaber. Darth Maul lightsaber. One green. One <laughs> Yeah. That would be cool. That would be awesome. Or like any other. I'm, I'm actually working on a uh, design for lightsaber nunchucks, and uh, I'm going to, oh, yeah. if and when those get completed, I'm going to have a blue and a green blade, so that when I swing them, the colors are blurred together. That would be cool. Yeah. What about y'all? Let's start with you. What kind of lightsaber? What color? Pink, green, pink, white. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? I would like, like, a turquoise color. Ooh, that's really cool. Pause and go with a good strong pink. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Always good color. <laughs> I'm probably have to go red or blue. I can't decide in between, but... You have the dark ball thing going on, too. Yeah, <laughs> the red's more, you know, aggressive, and the blue right. just feels more, you know... Faster on that skill. Yeah. So I can't decide. What about you, Kristen? Green. Go with green. I'd like probably purple or green. I don't know. I can see the purple being like a black light kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be fun. Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> 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 you could have fun with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've actually looked into the possibility of uh, making a turquoise colored lightsaber mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh, they do not have the coloring to light up a lightsaber with yes. that color. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can you invent it though. Yeah. You you you're going to have to because I'm going to buy one from you. <laughs> 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 the thing is, she doesn't like that color. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Mom doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not her lightsaber. It's not her lightsaber. That's right. Turquoise and pink. I was thinking about the pink one, but that would be too close to red. Mm. That's a good point. I got a question. Yeah. At what age can a can a uh, youngling, you know, have a lightsaber? Oh, at what age can they have one? That's good. That's a good question. And like, okay. does it have to be a specific color, or they can choose any color they want to? Well, from what we well, I guess we got to think about. Uh, Different species, for one thing. I mean, it's, it, if you've got somebody like Yoda who lives to be 900 years old, you know, do they age the same way? So, would you give somebody like him uh, a lightsaber at the same age that you would give, you know, say human, or would it have to be um, where their capabilities develop differently? So, I don't know if you could really call it, say, an age necessarily, uh, as far as like a number. Um, but I know that when when we see the younglings. Uh, in the prequel trilogy, they have short training sabers. Yes. Um, so they're not full-on lightsabers, uh, but they have some of the capabilities 
a lightsaber, but I would imagine they'd have Fisting, yeah. Yeah, they'd have safety Jedi features. Jedi Apprentice yeah. books talk about all that stuff. And, and they pretty much, all the ones that I've seen tend to be uh, blue or green. I haven't seen any other youngling training saber that has been other than blue so. or green. They have, um, like with the prequel era type Time for the Jedi, um, at least with Jedi Apprentice, because I like those books. Have you ever read them? Has anyone ever read them? Mm -hmm. They're good. They're, um, they're like probably young age or teen kind of books, but 